we thought we'd do a, a little short progress report on fly rod. I've gotten to the point where I can start working on her creel. It was haunting me in, in the beginning because basket weaves can get insane. This particular type of a basket weave that we're doing though, and this is not all that haunting, it's pretty nice. So I wanted to show you how I was constructing it. I've got a little bit of it started over here and some pencil you know, layout over here. So in order to do this particular style, you're gonna lay these uh, lines out kind of like bricks, you're staggering them. So you, if you do a row, say a quarter inch part, the next row you'd be staggering them like uh, like wood masonry. You kind of get the idea how that, is. and these are just uh, guidelines to kind of keep you, keep you honest here. And I'm gonna um, start in right here where I left off. So Max's camera's gonna pick up most of this. I'm using a, a parting tool. Yeah, I don't know if you, how that shows up, but yeah, if these things are sharp, you can cut across grain even on softwood like the pine here. If they're not, it tears and you can't have that. I'm just gonna start right in here. And when you come in off of the one cut here, get to the end and I just angle it up a little bit to go up to the next pencil line here, and then you carry it over. You can pretty much hear the sound of it cutting so nice. Trouble with this little V-gouge parting tool is the sides are, are fairly short, of course. It's not too difficult to get that corner underneath the grain you can see on this last little attempt, uh, which isn't ideal. It tends to pull the grain up, but if you don't let it get too far ahead of you, you can correct it. Everything's fine. Basically, the, the weave is kind of like, you know, like that. And instead of a like a picnic basket type of weave, I've done those too, and those can be grueling. <laughs> because you got to do the overlays and unders and uh, clean up everything. But this is uh, actually pretty nice. Once you get, it takes a minute you now to get into the swing of it. But once you do, you can make some pretty good tracks. It is time consuming and you gotta bring a pocket full of patience with you. You sit down to do a job like that. These tight little corners are a little tricky to get in and out of. When I mean, this is, uh, you know, I've just got it carved like this, it comes up a little rough, but I'll show you in a minute how sanding it makes it all come together. Now each one by itself is kind of eh, but when you put it all together, it looks pretty cool. This is 150, this is 220, yes. So 220, <clears throat> if you use, um, Anything coarser than 220 on pine at this stage, it takes way more away from your what you've done than you'd really want to give up. Um, but 220 is kind of just softens things up a little bit. And sometimes you have to sand across grain. You know, it's recommended to never. But when you have everything laid out across grain, yeah. you are gonna follow. Yeah, follow the pattern, yeah. <laughs> Get with the groove. Would, exactly. Afterwards, you can brush it, you know, kind of do this number, and that'll kind of comb it. <laughs> this will look so good. We've decided that we're going to stain her, not paint her, but stain her in different colors so that the grain of the wood shows through. Details like this will highlight so nice. You can kind of see that that weave thing going on. This whole thing gets 
sanded. The top kit's uh, treated in the same way. I'm gonna do a, a simple wrap type affair around the, the rim here. This is, we get into the fun part of this whole carving is putting the details in. It's gonna make it really, really shine. We'll keep you posted on the next phase of the operation. And uh, thanks for tuning in.